All right, we're going to be live just almost immediately. All right, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Kingdom Dynamics. And tonight, we've got a great show for you. It's good to see folks already chiming in. Uh, several are already watching, uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> good to see Pastor Sheila um, already watching tonight. There's Glenda Dutton watching tonight, and um, others that are, are coming in even as we speak. Uh, so I want to get into this tonight because we've got a lot to, uh, to talk about. Uh, Robert Dungay, a friend from the UK, is watching us tonight, and I know there's several others that are already planning to watch. So tonight my guest is Pastor Rick Watts from South Carolina, and on the first show he was on with me, I read his bio, and, and uh, I, I just want to say this about these folks. Uh, him and his wife are pastors there in North Carolina, and um uh, good to see Dr. Fay. Good to see Charlotte Anderson joining us tonight and so on. Uh, him and his wife are pastors, but they are also professors with World Bible School University online. And we really appreciate and love these folks. Uh, Pastor Rick, welcome back to Kingdom Dynamics, my brother. How are you? Hey there, Dr. Bill. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of uh, internet flow right here, it seems like. Uh, but I'm so glad to be with you tonight. We thank God for you and all that you're doing with World Bible School University. Sheila and I are certainly glad to be a part of that. We love you. We love Dr. Fay. We thank God for you and the vision that you have. And uh, we're just really, really excited. And I'm so excited to be with everyone tonight to share some things that uh, the Lord is doing in my life. That's revealing in his truth to me. I'm so excited about it. Amen. Amen. And that's the thing that I get excited about, you know, when I'm studying and I do that almost every day, I'm studying something or looking at something or I'll have a thought and I'll start researching it. And a, a, the, the, the revelation that flows out of that, I just get that's that's really <laughs> Jesus said one time to his disciples when they uh, said, I'm hungry. And they went to town to buy some food and they came back and he was no longer hungry. He said, I've got meat that you don't know about. And it's like, <laughs> that's the stuff that feeds me, you know. Um, oh, yes. But we're talking tonight about what does it mean to see the kingdom of God? And um, what we're going to do tonight, I'm going to read some verses here in just a moment, but uh, Pastor Rick is going to be sharing, and I'm going to just kind of be chiming in where I can. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, something that uh, he has some insight on. And, you know, even if we've all taught on this and have our own slant on it, he has some information. I've, I've gone through everything that uh, we're going to talk about tonight and plus some. And uh, we're going to uh, look at uh, seeing and entering the kingdom of God and what's that mean. Um, because the fact is, uh, when it comes to this passage of scripture, we're going to be talking uh, around uh, from John's gospel, chapter three, verses one through seven. Uh, I don't think there's anybody, that, uh, no matter what your your faith or your background, that hasn't looked at these verses. Uh, I think one of the problems is, is I, and I would really ask this question, is do we really understand about uh, its meaning, especially from this first century mindset and uh, from the, 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 the culture and, and particularly the language of, of similar words that were spoken back then. But let me read this right quick. Uh, John chapter three, verses one through seven in the New King James Version. And I know we'll be looking at some other translations, but it says there is, was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Keep in mind that the word see also is a another way we would say understand. 
that we were talking about seeing in your mind, in your understanding. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb uh, and be born? Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Of God, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Now, Pastor Rick, as you get started tonight, you told me uh, in your writings about a story about how this this revelation just jumped up in you, which happens a lot um, uh, with with people who are are diligent to study the Word. Uh, would you share uh, what's on your heart tonight with our audience and? Uh, you know, I'm not going to give you any leading questions. Just share the parts that you want to share, and we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bill. You know, we were talking before we came on the air how that there's just so much in this chapter. There's just so much in these uh, first 13 verses that, uh, you know, we just don't have uh, enough time tonight to cover all these things. But maybe, maybe we can just talk about a little bit of it that will just... Uh, cause the spirit within you to leap just like just like when Elizabeth was pregnant and Mary came and told her that she was that that she had a visitation from the angel and telling her that she was going to bring Jesus into the world and how that John leapt in the womb and so I pray tonight that your spirit will leap in the things that we will be sharing here you know and uh and not only is my revelation great and you get can get excited about say ooh ah you know, on these things. And I'm sure that many of you probably already heard this, but I've been preaching the gospel since I was 15. Now understand that I can't grew up in Pentecost and, and, you know, and I came through a lot of things I came out of a lot of legalism, a lot of do's and don'ts, even clothesline preaching. But, you know, I'm so thankful for when the Holy Spirit just, just nudges you. The Holy Spirit just drops a little something in your spirit. It's almost like he's saying, come here. Come a little closer. I have something that I want to share with you. This is an exciting time, and I'm telling you, that's what that's what transforms our lives. But you know, it was just a few weeks ago that maybe three to four weeks ago, I was sitting in a conference in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was listening to the speaker. And just like so many other times, you know, I, I'm just open to what God is saying. Okay. And I know that, you know, having preached all these years as, as a preacher of the gospel, that when I preach, people are hearing, and I pray that they're hearing something a whole lot greater than I'm able to put into words. And so that's why we need Holy Spirit. You know, even Jesus, when he was talking about the Holy Spirit in our lives, he said he will guide us into all truths. And he said we won't even have need of a man to teach us, for the Holy Spirit will be our teacher. And so I'm so excited about that aspect, you know, that he has been my teacher. And I thank God for all the men that have uh, influenced my life, that have touched my lives, the revelations, the teachings, uh, the, the examples that they have been in my life. I thank God for every one of them. But, oh, I'm telling you, no one can do you like Jesus. <laughs> the old song says, the Holy Spirit will just speak to you just nudge you along. And so I was sitting and I was listening and all of a sudden, you know, without expecting anything, I heard Holy Spirit say, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was getting ready to go on another journey, that God was about to take me into another place, that my eyes were about to see what I've never seen before. My ears were about to hear things I've never heard before. And my mind was going to begin to comprehend a level of who God is and who I am in Christ and who Christ is in me in this union, in this oneness, in this place with God. And, and I just couldn't wait. <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but I couldn't wait till the speaker got quiet and finished up so I could get along and find what God was actually saying to me. Yes. <laughs> now, this is a verse, and I, and I think I just quoted it in King James Version, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And uh, this is a verse, this is a passage that I preached for at least 40 years, you know, and we all have. Uh, but I know Holy Spirit well enough to know when he's about to take something that I used 
to know or something that I know right now and begin to open it up and give me more understanding than I ever had before. He's about to reveal something new that yeah. had never, never been seen before. Now, I knew in teaching this that when Jesus said that, he said, except a man, and instead of the term being born again, he's, he actually meant, and what was interpreted in other versions was, except to be born from above. Mm -hmm. Okay? But I couldn't wait to see even more than that. So where did I go? I go I've gone to where I've been since the 80s. I go straight to my Strong's Concordance, and I begin to look at the original Greek meanings and follow up on the uh, root till I find the root meanings in these things. And, you know, and I was astonished at what I found there. You know, it was a scriptural answer hidden there in the origin of the words born again that led me into further, further into the thoughts that I had been in for weeks. You know, and that's the way the Holy Spirit is. When you begin to think, when you begin to meditate, when you yeah. begin to ponder on the things of God, when you really just realize that there's more to God than we've ever encountered and that there's more to us than we've ever realized that all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will begin to move and, and give you something when you're hungry. Now, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, I, I just love this. It says that he was responding to what Jesus just said when he said, you must be born from above or born again. He was responding uh, according to re-entering a physical realm which is what a lot of religious people are. It's all about the physical realm. It's about man. It's about our do's and don'ts. It's about the law. It's about doings and not beings. And so Nicodemus, we know that he was a Pharisee. He was a great teacher of the law. He was also a member. He was a member of the Sanhedrins, and he was probably a member of the great Sanhedrin, which was in Jerusalem. Now, the Sanhedrins were in different locations, maybe different cities and things. When they had a question on the law, they would bring those questions to the Sanhedrins to get a final ruling according to the law. These were men who knew the law, the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin. And so um, the ruling body of the Jews, the Jews. And, you know, and we know that he came to Jesus at night, by night. You know, and there's a lot of people who said, oh, he was afraid to go around Jesus, you know, so he had to sneak in at night. But really, in just thinking about the whole episode here, I really believe that it's more of a symbolic, it's more symbolic of the condition that Nicodemus was in. Even though he was a teacher of the law, there were some dark areas in his life. The darkness of the, the religious, the unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. The unrenewed mindset coming into the presence of the light of the world at that time. And you know what? When he came to Jesus, to me right now, this is the greatest revelation that he could, that the world could have possibly received from the voice, the lips of the light of the world. He said, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And yet we read, we read those words and we think that it has something to do with our confession of faith instead of God's will, God's purpose, and God's design. We, we, we always think that we, we have something to do with this. <laughs> yeah. when God established it before the foundation of the world. You know, in, in talking about Nicodemus, when he came to Jesus, you know, sometimes, Dr. Bill, we even want to take religious people and just push them to the side and say, you know what, just stay in your in your dead works, you know. But but even through all of that, when he saw Jesus in verse two, he said, it's clear for us all to see, Rabbi, and called him teacher. It's very easy. The mirror translation says that we all see that you come from God as a teacher. The signs you perform are proof that God is with you. No one is able to do these signs you do if they are not in union with God. And that was a big step. Yeah. That was a big step for Pharisee. And mm -hmm. to say that you are in union with God. 
you know, and Jesus, that's when he answered him and said, except you be born from above, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, it's almost like when um, Jesus was sitting with his disciples one day and he said, uh, who do men say that I am? Yeah. And they said, well, you know, some say you're Elijah, some say you're this, some say you're this person. He said, but I didn't ask you who they say. I asked, who do you say? Who do you say that I am? And, you know, if he was asking us that question today, what will we really be able to tell him? You know what this pastor said or this bishop said or, you know, this apostle said or this prophet. But who do we who do we know him to be personally? And so, of course, when he asked that question, we know Peter spoke out. Peter never had a problem speaking out what he thought, whether it was truth or whether it was prejudice. <laughs> you know, yes, you know Pastor Rick, when I uh, when I teach on uh, the principles of biblical interpretation, and I think you've taken that class in the past. Yes, uh, I, I I always look at the the actual theological rules for interpreting Scripture, but. I have changed number one to my own version. My number one rule of biblical interpretation is common sense. You know, we need to look at some stuff. You know, you know, was Jesus really telling Nicodemus he was going to have to go back into his mother's womb and, and start off? No, that, that wasn't it at all. And it's amazing to me, so many misconceptions in our English Bibles were interpreted from a carnal realm perspective instead of a supernatural realm perspective. And I, you know, one of the things I was thinking about uh, I was talking to um, uh, Brett Erickson, he's a, a friend on Facebook and uh, minister, and he says, sometimes simplicity is the answer. Uh, and, and I think that's true because we look at scripture and we, we talk about how that, uh, just like this setting with Nicodemus and Jesus, and there's, there's so much in there as we've already said, but uh, I was looking at the mirror Bible here and um, I was looking at, at, at as, as Nicodemus is speaking to him, he's, he's saying, you know, can a person be born if they're already grown up? Well, you know, there's a difference between a person that's grown up that is mature and a person that's immature. And yes. you know, it's like a, 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 a Professor Lynn Garner says that everybody believes. The difference between a believer and a non-believer is the word believe. Everybody believes at a different level. And, you know, it's yes. amazing how many people are still stuck in a carnal realm perspective. I was thinking about COVID-19 and all the things going on. And one and just a couple of weeks ago, the scripture dropped in, uh, which I've heard this a hundred times. It's one, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And I think about <laughs> that scripture was... It's for believers, man. I mean, are you walking by faith or are you walking by what you can see, the five senses? Because the truth is walking by faith really means I'm not walking by what I see with my natural eyes in any way, shape or form. That's right. We continue to grow. We continue to grow. I think about First Corinthians, you know, chapter 13, when as a child, I spoke as a child and all these things. But when I became an adult, when I became a man. And yeah. really what that scripture is talking about is when I became an adult in the revelation of Christ in growing in him, then we can realize that we gaze face to face and we can know ourselves even as we've always been known. Come on. And so it's just wonderful in, in this. And so, you know, when Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus pretty much responded. He said, blessed are you. He said, because flesh and blood, did not reveal this to you, yep. but my father, which is in heaven. In other words, he got a glimpse of who Jesus was, which is also a glimpse of who we are. And so when Nicodemus came and he said, no one can do these except they be in union with God. Yeah. He got a glimpse somehow through all the religion, through all the training and the teaching and the, the ways of man, he got a glimpse of truth. Maybe it was when he, maybe it was just seeing Jesus. Maybe it was seeing him and then the word coming alive in him. But Nicodemus did not understand fully what Jesus was saying when he said, except you be born again. He said, how can it be person? How can you uh, be born again if you're already grown up? Yeah. You know, you cannot re-enter your mother's womb and be born a second time. But here's the thing. 
you know, so many times God wants to tell us things, but what we knew before keeps us from receiving the fullness of the truth that he's sharing with us now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so when Nicodemus looked at the subject merely on the physical side and he said, can you be born a second time? But that's not what Jesus meant when he said from above, you know, Nicodemus did not understand the difference between being born from a second beginning and a different beginning. And what Jesus was beginning to lay the foundation to bring greater revelation was, is that this is not being born a second time. This is not trying to fix up an Adamic mindset. This is not trying to fix what's wrong with you. This is trying to find out who you were before the you you think you are. Yeah. And so Jesus answered, he said, unless someone is born out of water, which is the womb, the natural and the spirit, there will be no possible connection with the realm of God. In other words, what he's saying here to Nicodemus is, is that which is flesh is flesh, right? And that which is spirit is spirit. And, and he's saying this, that when you're born into the world, you become aware of the world, the physical world that you're in because of your five senses, yep. right? But except you be born of the spirit and the quickening of the spirit, then you cannot sense the realm of the kingdom of God. Now, yep. what he's saying here also is that unless we were also spirit beings in the beginning, then we could have no possible connection with the realm of God, of who we were before we were born in the natural, yeah. you know, and it's not from a physical standpoint. You know, I think about the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and, you know, he said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, not knowing that he already had eternal life, just did not know how to see it, to access it or to, or know the truth about what it is. And Jesus told him, said, well, you know, you know the commandments. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I've done all these since I was a child. And Jesus realized that there was a very strong religious stronghold there. And he said, well, okay, well, if you want to be complete and perfect, then go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. In other words, you think everything is based upon your doing, and you, you ask me what must you do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus is saying, well, then go do some more. And maybe when you've done all that you can do and come to the end of yourself and your actions and your beings, maybe then you'll realize that it's not about doing, but it's actually about who you are and yeah, who I am. Being and not doing. Yeah, it's about yes. being and not doing. It's about not. being. Yes, it is. Yeah. Let, and let so something at you here uh, while we're in the middle of this, because uh, I was just re recalling as I was reading this, uh, from the mirror Bible, the commentary uh, said Nicodemus looks at the subject merely from a physical side. His second time is not the same as Jesus from above. A goddess uh, remark, uh, which is a, an, uh, an author of the American uh, Oxford American Dictionary, he says he does not understand the difference between a second beginning and a different beginning. Now, you brought that out in such a beautiful way. And I know you're headed there, but I just want to, I, I want us to get that because uh, that is was one of the most powerful statements that I've heard in a long time. Oh yes. That is very powerful. It's not about redoing or fixing up the old or trying to reproduce again, you know, or to start all over. You know, that's why a lot of people talk about, you know, turning a new leaf, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a New Year's resolution, beginning to do some things new. No, it's, it's going into what the revelation of what the Lord had really shown me in the Strong's Concordance. And as I begin to look, and, and you can look up uh, Born Again, and you can look those words up in the Strong's Concordance for your own self, and for time's sake and, and for clarity, I'm just going to give you the bottom line of what I found out as I began to look. You know, as yeah. I began to look at the words and the terms born again, and realizing that born from above, and we've all preached that as though, you know, the spirit of God is going to come on us and the spirit of God is going to empower us to help us, you know, from 
something from the outside that we've got to receive Jesus on the inside here, you know, instead of realizing that the breath of God is in us from the time we made that, that first breath in the natural realm that he's always been with us. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And so as I begin to look up and I realize that when we are born into this world, we are, uh, we are, uh, we become aware of the surroundings. We become yeah. alive in this world there is an awareness there's an awakening to the things around us uh we can also look maybe at generation and regeneration and those things when we're talking about being born again but the, what really what got me and really what has opened up a whole new realm for my life uh is again the word again and yes it can be from above but as I begin to look, there's another word. There's another group of words. It means from the first or from the beginning, from the yeah. very first. Yeah. And that's the problem with our soul, with our mind, with our thinking, is that we're always trying to become something that we already are. And we that's do right. that because we think we have not become that. And, I, you know, I don't know about you, but, but early in my ministry, and you started preaching at 15, I started preaching at 17, and early in my ministry, I always told people, you know, when people would uh, uh, come to know Jesus or be aware of Jesus, I don't, they always want to know where to go in the Bible to read. And I always tell them, go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But, you know, I got to where I would start telling, you know what, go to the book of Revelation. Just do that one first and get that <laughs> one done. Uh, but you know what, uh, what I really believe it would be the appropriate thing for people to do would be to go through the Bible and find everything that God ever said about who you are and embrace that, begin to believe yes. that. And so you yes. start off on the right foot by by believing what he says about you and, and beginning to practice. You know, it's kind of like Colossians 3, 2, that said, set your affection on things above, or the, the other translations say, set your mind on things above. And when we look at the word above, and, and as you're talking about the strong concordance here that you've been using uh, for many years, and, and I as well, probably about that same time in the 80s, um, uh, one of the things about James Strong's is he did write the strong concordance about 1800 years after the original Koine Greek. But when he talks about uh, setting uh, your affection on things above, that word above also can come from what we would look at as the word heaven. Even though heaven doesn't mean above, still he's talking about a higher plane of thinking. In other words, you know, get out of this religious low plane thinking, low realm thinking, and, and begin to think like God thinks. Because, you know, Pastor, that's one of the things that in modern Christendom people have done and said, there's no way we can think like God. There's no way we can ever be like God. You know, it, newsflash, we already are like him, and we already have his mind in us, and the purpose is so that we can think like him. And that's why I love this about being born from above. Yes. You know, uh, just a few minutes before I came on with you, I did a little three-minute think on this uh, on Facebook, and and I, I remember a time in my life, and this goes way back into the 90s, and uh, well, it's not that far from me, but for a lot of people, it may seem like it's a long time. But I, I was uh, having to make some decisions. The Lord has spoken to me that he was shutting down some things where I was concerned and opening up new doors for me. And so I began to uh, look for those new doors, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I began to become concerned because here I am a, a husband, a father, and uh, anxious to know where we're going, <laughs> where our next provision is coming from. And I remember doing this, Dr. Bill. I remember saying, oh, God, I, I can't hear you. What am I supposed to do? Lord, where am I supposed to go? You know, and uh, and I just began saying that. I, I, I can't hear God. I can't hear God. I can't hear God. And, you know, I went for days and days in that mode, you know, and I, I didn't like it. You know, and then then all the uh, Hamadia old mindset thinking comes in. Well, you know, God's not with you. God's not behind you. You know, you messed up now, you know, and those types of things. But I remember saying it one time. I was just I can see where I was standing. I was walking through our kitchen where we lived at that time. And I said, you know, Lord, I just can't I just can't hear your voice. And thank God. Holy Spirit broke through and said, my sheep know my voice and the voice of another they cannot hear. And you know what? I changed my, I changed my thinking. 
right there on the spot. I changed my thinking and I changed my confession right there. And I said, I am the sheep of his pasture and I know his voice. And not only the voice of another will I not hear, but the voice of another I cannot hear. That's good. <laughs> and so when I begin to hear this and what the Lord was really saying here is because, you know, of course, Ephesians chapter one, verse four, you know that he, in love, he created us in him pure and innocent and holy before the foundation of the universe. Uh -huh. You know, John one in the beginning was the word is not the same as Genesis one in the beginning God. You know, there's two different people. We're talking about eternity past. We're talking about before there was an Adam. I was created in him yeah. before the foundation of the universe that we were made in him complete and whole and everything that is there. And so as I begin to think about that, the Lord began to reveal to me that it has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with God coming to us right now. It's not that we, are, we must invite God into our lives and how many times have we said that along the years and inviting people to know God invite Jesus into your life invite ask Jesus to come be Lord of your life invite him in today no 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 this is much greater than that it's where when Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 he said father I pray that they understand and that they be one with me as I am one with you and that they may be one together with us I'm telling you that the invitation is not for us to accept Jesus into our lives like we're putting a patch on an old pair of jeans yeah but it's it's that the Holy Spirit is inviting us come up higher in your thinking Come up higher in your walk. Come up higher in your revelation. Come on. Come on on our side. Come on into this relationship. Come be part of us because that's who we created you to be when we were created in Christ before the foundation of the universe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're preaching now. You're preaching now. Hey, I got to read a statement that you <laughs> your write up. And you said, except you realize or become aware of your previous existence from the beginning, not from your fl fleshly birth, you cannot see or understand the kingdom of God. And, you know, one of the things I love yeah. about uh, you talking about Genesis and talking about John, um, in John's writings, John talks about a time before time where Genesis talks about in the beginning, but sometimes people don't connect the dots. And what I love is that you said, that I say it all the time, we, we, were ne we are not from Adam, uh, we were before Adam and even Adam, you know, there's a lot of people teaching that Adam is not a, wasn't a literal person, uh, but he was just a, a figure, a, a metaphor of something. And, and I tell people this, I don't really care whether he was a metaphor or he was literal. Here's the thing. When God made man, the, the Hebrew word for men is Adam. And we all know that. But what yes. sometimes we don't look at is when, when God created Adam, the Adam in Genesis chapter two, it's a different Hebrew word. It's similar, but it's Adam, and it means Adam the man. So when we talk about Adam, mm -hmm. we're talking about mankind, the species of people, the race of people, spirit beings that God created. When we're talking about Adam the man, we're talking about the guy that messed up and he created unintentionally, he created the Adam religion. And in the Adam religion, People begin to grab hold of that. His children grabbed hold of that. The Israelites grabbed hold of that. And people are still getting a hold of that today, believing that we're of Adam and we're we're not worthy and we're so beneath God and we can never be like God. And the truth is, if you go, but just just dare to go. I love your again. I mentioned it the first time you were on your your sign up there. Think outside the box. Uh, if we'll think outside the box and stop saying I'm of Adam and I'm cursed with Adam's curse. No, 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 no. Go before Adam. Think outside the box because before yes. Adam, you were created yes. just like the father. And even the Hebrew says there's the smallest measurement of difference between you and God, the creator with a capital C and you, the creator with the lowercase. But the fact is you're going to have to think about your previous existence and, and, and again, I love that statement that you, you said uh, so much that it, it's not about a second beginning. It's about a total different beginning than we've known. And man, I'll tell you, we got to come awake to this stuff. That is so true. 
That is so true. What about Jesus when he was talking to the people and they mentioned Abraham? He said before Abraham was, I amness, I am. Mm -hmm. You know, we were created in the I amness of God before we had a past, you know, and before I, before Rick Watts was, I am in the presence of God. You know, I am a creation of my father. I am the offspring of God. That's who I am. I am a son of God before the foundation of the world. And we have to come alive. We have to be quickened by the spirit of God will quicken us and make us alive. And as soon as we start turning, as soon as we start looking, as soon as we start believing, if we quit believing the lies of the old and we'll just dare to step out and believe the truths of what God has said and what Jesus brought to us and how he came to reveal the father to us and the father's love for us. And you know, the awesome thing is, is that God is love. He never changes. I just want to tell somebody out there right now, you got a bad view of God, but God is love. He's always been love. And because he's love, love is not what he does. Love is who he is. He always is love. And when you look to God, you encounter love. When you look to him, you're rewarded with love. You feel the love. You know the love because God cannot change. A lot of people want, you know, to say God's disappointed in us. God's this, God's that. Let me tell you something. God cannot change his nature. He will not change his nature. He will not change for anybody or any religion or any sin. God is love and he loves us and he loves us unconditionally. Okay. Unchanging. He loves us you today and so because god loves me he created us in that love and we are objects of that love but not only objects of that love but we become the love of god you know there's a passage of scripture in genesis um i I can't remember the verse uh the chapter right off but it talks about isaac going into a land during a time of famine Mm -hmm. Okay, and, you know, when famine hits, a lot of people would get up and they'd go somewhere else. But God didn't tell him to go somewhere else. And so the word says this, that that Isaac sowed into the land during a time of famine. And it says, and he prospered and he continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. And so today, if you don't know God's love, you know, if you've been in religion and it's do's and don'ts and it doesn't seem to be working for you and there's no peace, there's no joy. Hey, let me tell you something. God is love. Get the Passion Translation Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, go to, uh, help me out, Ephesians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, Fruit of the Spirit. Which one, Dr. Bill? Galatians chapter 5. The Fruit of the Spirit is. Galatians. The Fruit of the Spirit is love. Yeah. Yes. And then it says manifesting, manifesting or expressing itself in love, uh, love expressing itself in joy and peace and gentleness and goodness and meekness and faith. All these good things. That's the manifestations of love. And God is love. But if you look to him, you will never get anything but love. God never stopped loving man. God never stopped caring for man. When Adam and Eve uh, fell from that place of understanding of that, of that, uh, they fell out of the oneness because of the things that they thought God never stopped loving man. He has always loved man. Even the Psalmist David said, what is man that you are my, that your mind is just so full of him. God loves us. We're the object of his love. And the thing is you can reach out in a time of spiritual famine, right where you are right now. The Bible says that those who believe, uh, uh, and God must first believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. All you've got to do is look to God. And as soon as you get your eyes focused, as soon as you take a deep breath of the presence of God, as soon as you close your natural eyes and just begin to think on the, on God himself, love is there. Love is not a thing. Love is a person. And he will minister to you and you will find love. If you look to God today and so in a time of famine, you can sow in your faith and just believe that God is love. You don't have to believe anything else. Just start right there, because when you know that God is love, that is everything in itself and simplicity. 
And you can you declare that you sow that you speak that until you become until you uh, continue to grow in love and you you become very prosperous in love until you become love one with love. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Well, yeah. We got well, we got way off in that yeah. one, but yeah, that's thank okay. God for that. But, you yeah. know, as a first scripture, in, in, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just, I, I, it, back to that. it's really amazing that Nicodemus in his uh, confused state of mind, uh, he took everything at face value. And a lot of times we do that. We, we look at everything around us and we let that control us. Uh, who said what about us? Who who smarted off at us? Who's who doesn't like us? It, it really doesn't matter. I, I just say it this way: God likes me, and uh, and God loves me, and I'm good with that. Uh, but but sometimes, even in hurtful situations, we're not looking to love. And you know, I I do understand what you're saying. And and people tonight that you're, you're speaking to, I believe people that are hurting, you're speaking to tonight that. Um, really don't get how that we're not born in this natural realm. So there's a lot of things in this natural realm that, that really isn't our issue. We're born from above or born no. from another realm. Uh, the word born, actually, the Bible said that the birth of Jesus took place on this wise or in this way. The word birth there, actually, when you study it out, speaks of origin. And so he always speaks from his yes. origin. And so we need to look to origin and speak or look from that same position. So I just thought that was interesting. Very good. Yeah. And, you know, with Nicodemus in verse 10, and we didn't cover verse 10, but I just want to refer to it real quick. He said to Nicodemus, you're the teacher of Israel. Yeah. Yet you do not know these things. Yeah. You know, there was just enough to recognize that there was something special about Jesus, that Jesus had this special relationship with God. And that's so much like people today, you know, everywhere. I mean, we've got we've got these superstar, what we consider superstar ministers, you know, oh, they're so anointed and oh, they've got a relationship with God. And, and people don't realize we're all the same. We are one with him, created in him. And we all can have the same relationship with God. That there's, there's no big times in God. But he said, you're you teaching Israel. You're a great teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things. You don't realize that there's a physical, but there's also a spiritual, and that God is spirit. You've never seen God, but yet you don't realize all of this. But then in verse 13, Jesus said this, no one can engage in heaven's perspective unless one's heavenly origin is realized. The son of man declares mankind's cogenesis from above. And that's yeah. from the mirror study Bible. And you know what was the awesome thing was and, and what I love it is the Lord speaks to us to do things. Sometimes a, a while back, the Lord spoke to me about a year ago when I first uh, became involved as a student with World Bible School University. And uh, Dr. Catherine Toon was using the mirror study Bible some. And it's like quick and I, I got to have it. I got to have this this study Bible, you know. And, and of course, the Passion Translation, we just love it here. Most of, most of all of our people in the church, every one of our members nearly have a Passion Translation Bible. Awesome. And it's just, it's just wonderful to begin to understand that God is a God of love and he's not just ready to knock you over the head and send you on to hell. But he loves us and it is his desire, you know, that we know love and we encounter love, experience love and become love. And so in this that no one can fully engage in this is exactly what I heard from the spirit of the Lord. When I went to the Strong's Concordance, that was my first place to go. Then I have this um, uh, parallel Greek Bible and I love, and I've used that a lot over the years and I go and I read in there. And then I went to the passion translation and then I went into the mirror and that's where I saw in verse 13, which is basically saying what I have here, where I said, except you realize, except you become aware of your previous existence from the beginning, not from your fleshly birth, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And he said in verse 13, in the translation here in the Mirror Study Bible, no one can fully engage in heaven's perspective unless one's heavenly origin is realized. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Oh, Amen. that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Amen. And you see, 
he said, don't be surprised. Don't be, mar don't sit there with your mouth dropped wide open. Like I'm speaking something strange to you. You're a teacher of the word. You're a teacher of all Israel. Surely you knew there was more than just this. You know, I tell people sometimes we talk about the law, you know, and uh, we talk about the Ten Commandments. And, and I like to tell people, you need to begin looking at things differently. Instead of the Ten Commandments, of these are the things you must do. Let's look at them as the Ten Prophecies given to Moses up on top of the mountain. Thou shalt not means that prophetically you're not going to do these things. <laughs> not that you don't try to do them, you know, because that drives us to Christ. But in Christ. We have no desire to do those things. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, but and seeing the, the kingdom of, of God and the rest of this verse you were reading from the, uh, the mirror Bible uh, says the son of man declares humanity's cogenesis from above, from another realm, from a, uh, another place, another mindset. And uh, it, it's so amazing how Holy Spirit leads us. Uh, the, the point of the Holy Spirit leading us is to lead us or to guide us into all truth. Uh, not yes. only truth, but all truth. All. Talk to us some more. Amen. And so when he was saying, how is all of this possible? How is it all possible? And Jesus said, don't you know, being a teacher, you should have known this. Now, our genesis our beginning, my beginning was not on September the 28th, 1961, nor if I went back to find out my date of conception. My realization is, is that before I was born, I was in the I amness of who God is. Okay. And he said, don't be so surprised that I say this to you. And you know, so many times, personally and i can speak because i came out of religion and i came out of tradition so many times you know we're willing to just say oh you're crazy we hear somebody else speak a, a truth we've never heard before oh you're you're heretic you know you're of the devil well the only thing that i find in the word that is of the devil is that harmonia mindset of sin consciousness to where we have we've missed the mark we're missing the mark we have a mistaken identity there are feelings of loneliness there are feelings of alienation from god like we've ever been separated from him he has never never and you know even jesus when he came and he began to reveal and he was trying to tell these disciples hey i am with you i am with you always you know even to the end of the age and he yes. said this he said i will in no wise cast you out in other words there's nothing you could do that would ever cause me to push you away from myself that i would just say cast out i would cast you out and i know that a lot of preachers their minds are going crazy right now you know thinking about the sheep and the, and the wolves and the right hand and the tares and all of this you know but hey you've got to know the nature of god and then you've got to realize that the bible was translated by men huh into english who had issues who had harmonia, who had a mistaken identity, did not know their origin in God. They did not know their cogenesis in Christ in the beginning before the foundation of the world. And they do not know that we've been regenerated into this world. And when Jesus came, he came to show us who we really are and we could come alive as the sons and daughters of God. And we can be also the express image of God in the earth, just like Jesus. Yeah, amen. And you know, you made a you made a statement uh, said Nicodemus came seeking knowledge. Jesus offered him life. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. But and, and that's 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 what he's always offered, is it not? When he put Adam and Eve in the garden, did he not say, "Eat of this tree, the tree of life"? But what did they eat of? They eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Nicodemus won't know, how do I do this? The young rich ruler came up saying, how do I inherit this? You know what? It's life. 
It's just life. Jesus said, I am the bread from heaven. Eat on me. Amen. He is the bread of life. If we eat on Jesus, it's, it's, it's not about a doctrine. I'm not here trying to establish a doctrine tonight. I'm not here trying to get a teaching out over the air. What I'm here to try to tell you tonight, it is the spirit of God, the life of God, the breath of God, the mind of God. And the word says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A little earlier, Dr. Bill, you said something about people. All you've got to do is let the spirit rule. All you've got to do is let the mind of God, because we are created in him before the foundation of the world, that is our origin, that is our beginning, that is who we are before we had a flesh. And if we would just allow the thoughts of the spirit that is in us, in this body, to begin to, to relate to our souls, our own souls, our own minds, our own feelings, our own thoughts. And then, you know, we can begin to move in this oneness with him. But before that, it was the flesh. And the flesh just says, no, 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 no. It's all about me. But when, but when we begin to receive the things of God, when we begin to see who we were, you know, there's no sickness in God. There's no, there's no darkness in God. And in our spirit, there's no sickness. In our spirit, there's no darkness. In our spirits, there's no poverty. In our spirits, there's no death. There's only life. You know what? And when we come into agreement with that, the word says, if any two agree as touching anything on the earthly realm you will have what you say huh and it's up to us to declare and speak even life over these physical bodies that we're in today even Amen. over our financial situations today Amen. even over uh our, our our sin influenced consciousness today that we are the sons of god let, let me just uh, interject here. There's a scripture that you uh, use, and I don't want to get off track here, but in Ephesians 4, verse 23, it says to uh, be renewed. This is the Mirror Bible. Be renewed in your innermost mind. I, I know we read that sometimes, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And, and the word spirit here isn't really uh, talking about your spirit as a spirit being, but it's talking about uh, your thinking. And uh, the Passion Translation says it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you. And that's what really does make us new or really uh, causes the regenerative, the supernatural regeneration to manifest in us is when we get revelation. And I, I've talked about this a whole lot on my shows, but I remember several years ago, uh, I, I I was led by Holy Spirit to go to the book of Revelation and start teaching it. And it didn't take me too many chapters till I got very frustrated. And I, I actually got angry about it. And uh, finally, I broke. The Lord didn't break, but I broke. And I said, you know what, Jesus, whatever way you're going, that's the way I'm going. And, you know, at that moment, and I've had many uh, uh, experiences where Revelation would begin to unfold to me through the uh, several years now. But but at that moment in time, a window of revelation opened. And I just say it this way, and I don't say this pridefully or boastfully, but I just say it with all humility that a window of revelation opened that has never been closed off. And it's wonderful to go to the scriptures oh, and be renewed in the spirit or the inner portion of your thinking because that's what uh, Jesus said it truth will make you free that's what makes us free and we can live free and I posted on Facebook that you know that's what life's all about it's just simply to be lived amen and you know the scripture tells us not to be conformed to this world yeah. that means tradition religion or anything else don't be conformed there don't let what has always been affect where we are or where we're going right now you know we have a tendency to do that we have a tendency to go back and to do what we've always done and to think like we've always thought and somehow or another we think we're going to get something different than we've always had but you know we've got to realize that religion is focused on the flesh man it's led by the carnal mind we've got to become transformed he said don't be conformed to it don't conform to this, yeah. but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind or be transfigured by the renew renewing. And that's what you said a second ago about uh, our minds and the thoughts and the revelation that comes to us, you, you know, and listen, revelation, when it comes to us, it, it's not always comfortable. You know, I tell people and I preach to four hours many, many times that a revelation will bring forth a revolution. It'll bring a revolution inside of you, you know? And so when you get a revelation of God, you don't always want to share that with everybody else because you don't need to add to the to the revolution that's about to take place because it's enough to, to have our own thoughts and our own minds changed and, and renewed. Maybe I should say renewed and not changed, but to be transfigured into a greater thought. You know, so a revelation, when it comes, it will bring a revolution. It's going to bring up everything that inside of you that's going to fight the knowledge, to fight the revelation of this new uh, thing that God has given you. But that revolution, if you'll just keep declaring, if you'll keep seeking the knowledge of the new truth of this revelation, it will bring a reformation in your life. It will reform your whole mindset. It will reform your entire perspective and it will bring restoration. You know, the revelation is to bring restoration in the end, but the, the mindsets, the war, the back and forth that you go through in the meantime, you know, you you just got to hang on to the truth that God means what he says and says what he means. And God's word is truth. And the spirit is the spirit of truth. Not, and it doesn't matter what we thought before we can come into that truth of what God is saying. And yeah. so, as you mentioned in Ephesians 4, to be renewed in your innermost mind. You know, it also talks about we are co-seated with Christ in yeah. heavenly places. That's before we were born. That's our place that's always been. You know, that which has always been still is, and that which we are truly in Christ is what is who we've always been in him, co-seated with him. It's not that all of a sudden, you know, we decided we get saved with you, Jesus, and he puts us up on the throne with him. No, we were co-seated from the beginning in our original origin with him. You know, when Jesus came, John the Baptist first came talking about repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came out of the wilderness and he was preaching repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It wasn't saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Repent has to do with our minds. It's talking about change your thinking. Yes, Begin to think like God. Begin yes. to think like me. Allow the thoughts of God to rise up in you and change your thinking to the point where it changes your perspective. It changes your walk. It transforms everything about you. And you know what? When you begin to think the thoughts of God, it'll cause you to be completely reprogrammed in the way you even think about yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. You, you know, know, Paul says, renew your minds. This transformation happens in the spirit of our minds, awakened by the truth on a much deeper level than just intellect or academic consent. Amen. And you know, that's the thing about Adam is when Adam... Uh, went for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I've always called that a type of the arm of the flesh. It's like I'm striving to do good, uh, but I'm not good enough Then striving to do evil, but I can't even do that right. And it's this constant laboring. Uh, someone said that the world always seems to be toilsome uh, in labor uh, instead of uh, just reaching to our original self in God. And that's so true because we really have uh, if we would stop for a minute and and look that we were uh, created before Adam in eternity past, and the truth is that we find that in God there is no laboring, no toiling, but we were raised in this. You and I both have a very similar background, and we were raised in this. We were taught to work hard, and if we believe God hard enough, and if we pray hard enough, and if we fast long enough, and we go to enough yes. church services. That, you know, that's the way, and that's nothing, and nothing wrong with those things, but it's, that's just toilsome labor that's never going to get us any place except to frustration in our soul, but resting in the Lord and just embracing, uh, you know, I, I love that about uh, our, our origin, looking at who we are, and, and we're just a few minutes from, uh, from an hour being up, but I'd like you just to just uh, let it go, whatever's on your heart, whatever you'd like to close with uh, and share with the people tonight in a closing word. You know, verse 24 in the Mirror Bible says, immerse yourself into this God-shaped new person from above. In other words, 
just kind of dive in. Come on. In believing God. That you are more than men say you are. And that you are more than your own mind even tells you are. You are joint heirs with Jesus. And a lot of people will preach that. But they really don't understand it. You are joint heir with Jesus. Co-seated. You were created in him. You are in Christ and Christ is in you. You are inseparable. You are one with him. And it is time to just immerse yourself into this union. Okay. It has nothing to do with works. You can never, you cannot do anything to make God love you more. And I know this will upset some religious folks, but you can never do anything to make him love you less. Come on. God is love. He loves you. You're created in his image and in your, his likeness. You are his off. Do you understand? You are his offspring. You are the same in his same image and the same likeness. And this is what true righteousness is about. This is what true holiness is about. This, it's not about our works. No, no. Our works are as filthy rags. It's about who we are in him. The Bible says we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hey, where we were created, where our origin, where our genesis was, and nothing has changed. It's just that this world and this flesh has distracted us, got our attention, placed its thoughts, its values upon us, when Adam fell, he began to see all the negative things in the awareness of the world around him and the awareness of the physical flesh, even to where he wanted to cover it up. But God loves us. And Ephesians 1 tells us that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as our love gift, as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father. OK, all because he sees us wrapped up into Christ. And this is why we celebrate. This is why we praise him. This is why we worship him. This is what gives us life. This is what gives us hope. You know, it, it is. This is what really just transforms our entire being. The excitement because of the love of God not only shown through us through Jesus, but it was reminded, it was a reminder of his love for us, that Jesus went down into our darkest nights, that Jesus went down into our most hellish situations. He even went to a cross and took everything we have ever felt and everything we have ever thought, even to the point on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The truth and the matter is that God has never left us nor forsaken us, but everything and every feeling and every negative, wrong, mistaken identity thought that you have ever had in your life came upon Jesus at that moment. And he, as he cried out, it was our own souls crying out through him. The one who knew, did not know these things, but always knew who he was. He felt our infirmities. He felt our pains and our very thoughts were upon him but he released that to the father why because before we ever had those negative thoughts the love of god was lavished upon us freely and greatly as a love gift and you know what he still lavishes his love upon us even now just trust him just believe him just reach out to him just call upon him right now amen just believe on him and you know what? Say yes. Say, say yes. yes to all these things. You may not understand it, but it's okay. Just say yes. Say yes. Amen. Amen. And you know what, uh, Pastor Rick, this is a powerful, powerful message. And like we've said throughout the broadcast, there was a lot more that could have been shared. We probably could have went a couple of hours to cover this. <laughs> uh, but I, I just want everybody to know that, you know, quit wrestling and struggling with where you're at. Just 
Just uh, look, look, the Bible says to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look under the, not just the Jesus of three and a half years, but the eternal Christ who is and was and is still manifesting in your awareness. And uh, just keep looking to your father. God is love. He doesn't know how to do anything else but love. And that's who he is. He can't hate you. Even when you mess up, it's you that's hating yourself. You're just mad at yourself. God's not mad at you. But I'll tell you one thing. God is madly in love with you. And yes. uh, you're his child. You're his creation. I want to yes. thank you, Pastor Rick, for coming on the show tonight. You are such a blessing, my brother. Thank you. And you are too. We love you so much. And Dr. Faye as well. God bless y'all. Amen. God bless everyone out there. We've been having meetings this week. Um, you know, the school had 125 students, right? 225 students right now. And, uh, I don't know where we're going to be in our next block of classes, but, uh, we're, we're grateful to the Lord. And, um, uh, so listen, everybody, uh, if you would please click like and click share. Uh, also, let me just say that uh, in the morning at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, Dr. Catherine Toon will be joining me for part two of our study. Uh, it has been such a blessing. We weren't on last week. There was some downtime with Zoom, but everything's going great. So we'll see everybody then. Have a great evening. God bless you. And uh, please click like and share, and we'll see you next time. Next Thursday night, Dr. Kay Fairchild is going to be with me. And uh, that's always a blast. So we'll see you all then. Bye-bye, everyone.